Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to Oracle Database Administration Workshop. So in our previous videos, we have seen so many models uh, with architecture, you know, database architecture, ASM architecture, and the configuration, installation, and also some of the basic administration tasks of my ASM and database, you know, and then startup and shutdown sequence, and you know, so many topics and so many models we have covered so far uh, as a basic activities. So now here we are uh, dealing with, uh, with, with this today's session, uh, some of interesting topics that is uh, network uh, configuration or networking at at my Oracle. So, what are the network parameter files? What are the uh, you know uh, how the connection will happens and how the connection is handled? I know everything we have seen uh, theoretically. Now we will see the, the the actual files you know which are needed for you know database connection or a network or remote connections. So it all will be established using uh, three main files. Those are like you know, TNS name dot ora, listener listener dot ora, and SQL net dot ora. We are gonna deal all these uh, you know files and how we can create and what are the use cases of these. Everything we will see it in this today's topic. Let's go to the next. Okay, Oracle Net Service. So as I already explained, Oracle Net Service is something, you know, if an end user, like, you know, from your desktop or from your uh, web, web URL or from your mobile device, if you want to connect to your RDBMS, I said there's a listener, listener will take your connection and it'll authorize all your uh, connection details, like, you know, whatever detail you have passed, like port, host name, uh, you know, uh, which uh, protocol it listening, everything it will verify. And if everything, the username and password, it will validate with the Agnet database. And if you are a valid authorized user, it will connect, it will it will connect, it will give back acknowledgement and you are a valid user, you can connect to database. And there's a shared server process or dedicated server process will be started for your connection. So it happens via TCP or UDP network. It again depends upon uh, which uh, protocol you are using and listener will take your incoming connection and will connect to my database. So this is typically how the connection works. And then with the client side, there should be a Oracle net configuration file. And with the server side, there's a Oracle net configuration file. What is this client side net configuration file and what is this server side net configuration file? At the client side, we'll be having file called tnsname.ora. At the server side, we'll be having a file called listener.ora. So these are like, you know, our my net service configuration files. So how we can create this listener and TNS files using NetMGR, NetCA, OEM, and what and manual method, whatever you prefer, you can create it. So how the net listener works, uh, you know, uh, where is my net listener location? It, if it is a grid dome, it will be grid dome network admin listener dot uh, and then SQL net dot This is my server side. And where at my client side, there's a TNS name dot Whenever the connection comes, listener will take, and my listener will be running up and running always 24 by seven, and it will take incoming connection and it will connect to my database. And then if incoming connection request, how the connection is established, it will, listener will take that request and pass it to database and it validate if it is authorized user and it will connect, it will give acknowledgement back, you can directly connect to database, it will go off, right? So it listener will go off and user process, uh, you know, allocated to one of the server process, whether it is a dedicated server process or shared server process, one server process will be started. And this user will communicate with that server process and server process will communicate to database. Whatever query I'll send, the user process will take and user process will pass it to the database. And this listener will goes off. This listener it does not need any more. This listener needed only at the initial time of connection. Once the connection is established, so this listener is not needed anymore. If this listener goes down also, doesn't matter. My connection will be established. Right, so tools for configuring uh, your, uh, tools for configuring and managing your Nets or Oracle network. Uh, you know, you can use OEM or NetMGR or NetCA, Oracle Net Configuration Assistant or the command line or the manual method, right? Like using VI editor, you can do it. And what are the basic, uh, you know, uh, two checks you do. Once this is done, you have to use this LSNRCTL, listener control utility, and the TNS ping. These are the two utilities you have to make use of them. So testing your net connectivity, whether it's connecting or not, either use this TNS ping utility, and you have to give all these details. So what we can do, let me uh, demonstrate that one, right? So let me connect here.
Okay, so this is my server and where war cell is running. So what I'll do, I will set my environment uh, plus, not plus, ORCL. And then I'll go to my, uh, not going. So I, as I said, like you can use any utility, I'll use net MGR. See, you got this GUI mode here, local, and you can see this profile and service naming and the listeners. You get everything right just click on this listener and click on this plus sign and you can give my database is orcl i'll do listener underscore orcl and then okay you can see listener orcl and you, you, you can give anything here right listener locations and you can you can do add address and this is your server name and this is your port and if you want you can do show advance and then you know you can you can close it this is about listeners and go to naming service and click ok and then give this orcl orcl and next and then tcp and then host name you have to give the host name so my host name is i'll give host name or else i can take it from here and take one more session host name you can see this is your host name copy and go back here and paste your host name and next and service name orcl and next and test connection i don't want to do it now finish you see here under listener i have my listener file under service name i have my orcl both are ready so now i will save this one and i'll exit save no save as like i'll directly save it cancel it save the top configuration and exit that's it so now if you go back to your oracle home oracle home cd network admin you can see both the file listener and tsm you can see the date here if I do date here, that is 1315 and 1314. These are the two files got created. So now I do cat of this listener. You can see listener.orcl. If I do cat of this one, you see orcl and description, protocol, host name, port, and service name. So both are running. So now if I do PSF and EF, grep, uh, you know tns you do tns nothing is running so what i'll do now l s n r c t l l s n r c t l status listener so it's not started so l s n r c t l start listener you can give any name it doesn't matter right so what happens it is giving this particular error message it's a good we'll, we'll troubleshoot what what exactly that error message is we will add this particular uh, host name in our uh, host configuration file i have config and this is ip vim slash etc hosts and this is a file ip and then host name let me save this one Okay, I cannot add it as a Oracle user. I need to log in. Uh, that I'll go here. SU root. So I have config. Yeah, I am the CTC hosts.
I have config. I will take this IP address. Most name. Okay, so now we have done, we have added it. Now we will see start listener or reload, whatever you do it. Right, now it started. So it's already started. If I do status, now it's see, successful. Right, if I do PSFNEF, grep TNS, you can see this is running here. And then if I do here cat TNS name dot vara, this is ORCL. If I do TNS ping ORCL, see, I'm able to successfully ping this particular host. If I do TN listener dot vara again, TNS listener dot vara, yeah, everything is successful. So the TNS ping is also working fine. So if ORCL TNS ping, it is successfully able to ping okay zero second so that's about you know testing your oracle net connectivity the do tns ping or else you can do host name 1521 orcl this also works so or else if you do orcl tns ping that also works so what we can do i will try that as well right tns ping host name colon 1521 slash orcl you can see okay attempting to connect to this one you know successfully connected so that's about the testing your connectivity so naming method uh, what are what are the different uh, naming methods available easy connect using a tcp ip connect string or local naming using your local configuration files and direct naming using your ldap connectivity and external naming uh, you know, any supported Oracle naming convention external method, like, you know, you can use any uh, IIM or, you know, uh, SSO, like anything you can, you can use it. External naming and LDAP and uh, local configuration and then the TNS ping. So if easy connect will be, uh, you know, connecting, right? It is, is enabled by default. Easy connect is by default, it's enabled. Whatever we tested just now, right? So by giving host name, IP address, host name and the port and the DB name. Uh, you know, uh, this is one of the widely used and it's enabled default and supported with the TCP and, and also UDP and no SSL. And then this is widely used, easy connect. And uh, local naming, again, uh, instead of uh, passing all your uh, details like host name, port name, and this one, everything you can keep it in, in one single file that is TNS name dot vara and connect using add the rate or CL. So if uh, if we see we already have one Oracle user, right? So we will test that one. SQL plus Oracle slash Oracle. So he's able to connect. And then if I suppose if I use Oracle Oracle at the rate ORCL, and then I will be able, I should be able to connect. So it says a uh, listener does not know current service. So this list, uh, this service, whatever we created, we need to register at database level. Let's see how we can register that at, at my database level. Okay, so I also tried, if you see here, I also tried alter system register, system registered, but when we checked LSNRCTL status, uh, you know, host name you can see, right? It is, it is pointing to local domain.com. If I do, uh, what I can do, if I do cat of this file, and then and then and then it, it's supposed to start it from this particular file right so the host name is wrongly uh, my listener is wrongly uh, you know listening under this particular uh, the, the, the wrong host name if i do l s n r c t l status these are the common common mistakes you know uh, like everyone everyone will 
will, will you know we used to do it so what we can do we can kill that particular tns kill minus nine and you can kill that service and that will go off now see now it's done now we will will start our listener once again lsna ctl okay now connection refuge now we'll start it right now it started now you can see host name here it's correctly pointing to my host name if i do status again you can see now it's correctly pointing to my uh, uh this one now we will try to connect that oracle user at the rate oracle this is what right here SQL plus Oracle slash Oracle and ORCL. Come down. Still does not currently know the listener service. So once again, same issue. We will see that listener status again. And listener support no services. Like we'll connect back to the database. Alter system register. Right, show parameter service. Right, ORCL. And then we'll do one, we'll wait, we'll give a few more minutes to, because that registration will take two seconds. Okay, now if I check it one more time because my pmon process will uh, try to register a database and a listener for every 60 seconds so once we do the registration we need to wait at least for a minute so if we do lsnr ctl ah, see now you can see right earlier when when i did lsnr ctl status like no service listener support no services when i did now lsnr ctl status listener you can see orcl is registered now i can try that connection you can see right SQL plus Oracle Oracle at the right ORCL. See now I'm able to connect. Show user. You can see Oracle. So that is one way of connection. Like you know, you can use this uh, Oracle Oracle at the right Oracle. That is a local naming, and you can you, you can use the direct LDAP directory connection to the client, and you know you can use the same. Uh, your TNS connection, the authentication will be validated via LDAP. And then again, external naming convention for non Oracle naming service, you can use any third party, uh, uh, you know, uh, the third party, uh, uh, the, the directory uh, uh, or naming service is that where your uh, username and password will be validated against your third party, uh, uh, you know, authentication. And, uh, you know, connecting to the database link, database link connection, we need one more database. So we will cover this particular database link in in, in, in next uh, connection. So that is uh, for, for all these activities, we have a lab guide here. Uh, you can go to listener files and TNS files and, you know, go into particular that uh, Oracle home network admin and validate your, uh, you know, uh, connections, listener file, how it looks and TNS files, how it looks. And then you can use, uh, you know, configuration file using Netka or NetMJR. We shown using NetMJR. You can use also Netka, and you can do this dynamic registration and you know static registration. So when you use 1521, uh, if you use the PMON, it will dynamically register. When you use the port other than 1521, you have to manually register. And then uh, you know DB link, we will cover it. Uh, you know, we need. Uh, one more uh, database so we will we'll test it uh, in in next next topic so because we'll i'll create one more database and then we'll test this db name db name is basically to connect your uh, you know uh, remote databases suppose you have a database a and you have a database b and you are connected to database a and then you want to access some tables in database b so you can connect a database link between uh, both the databases, database A and database b and via that db link you can access those particular tables or objects so that's a uh, use of DB link. So we will check it out a particular session on the DB link. Uh, you know that that's very simple. You can you can use this create database link remote connect to HR identified by HR using remote, uh, you know, uh, remote connection TNS ping. So we'll check that one in, in our next topic.
So that's about uh, today's uh, you know, network configuration. And uh, one more file I wanted to explain, uh, you know, uh, your uh, TNS files, right? Sorry, SQL net dot or a file. Um, network, network CD admin. Okay, right now we don't have that SQL net dot file. If you go to sample directory, there's a SQL net dot file. So why this uh, SQL net dot file is used? This SQL net dot file is used basically when you are using your wallet and when you are using your uh, uh, you know TDE and for so from the security uh, advanced feature, you can use uh, this this SQL net dot file. But otherwise, you know, we, it will not be used much. And it is it will again used for some of the compatibility version. For example, if you are using the client version uh, 11G and your database uh, version 12C, when you are uh, using that client version mismatch, so that time you can use SQL net dot or and mention that compatibility and then you will be able to connect. So other than that, you know, it, it will not be used much. So main important files are listener and TNS files. So now the quiz time, which configuration files are used to uh, configure your listener. Uh, listener.ora, configure listener.config, TNS name.ora, listener.config, SQL net.ora, SQL net config. So configure your listener. The answer is listener.ora. And uh, uh, the, the another question comes here which files resides in my client server? Which files resides on my you know database server? Uh, on the client side, we'll be having a TNS name.ora, and the server side, we'll be having a listener.ora. So that's it about the network configuration in database. So we'll go with the uh, uh, managing database structures and some of the internal components uh, in our next topic. Uh, thank you guys.